What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Indianapolis Colts Syndicate, where today we're going to talk about the offensive line that woefully underperformed in 2022 for no real rhyme or reason. They just took a massive step back from one of the top five units in the NFL to probably one of the bottom five units in the NFL. You know, if you look at who we have going into this year as the starters, it's going to be Ryan Kelly at center, of course. Then you have Big Q and Will Fries at your guard positions. And then at tackle, it's his second-year tackle, Bernard Raymond. And you have Brayden Smith on the right side. If you look at PFF grades, okay, looking in the middle, Ryan Kelly had a 64.3 PFF grade in 2022, which was 16th out of 36 qualifying centers. Big Q was at 68.4, which was 20th of 77 guards. And Will Fries in limited action, of course, had a grade of 58.4, which was 50th out of 77 guards. Then you look at the tackles. That was really kind of the bright spot for the Colts. Um, and obviously, Bernard Raymond was more toward the end of the year, and he got better as the year went on. The entire unit really got better after Jeff Saturday showed up. You know, even though the team still only won one game under Jeff Saturday, the offensive line, for the most part, did better. You know, everything was dysfunctional last year, so it still wasn't great going down the line, but they definitely picked it up down the end of the line. And Braden Smith finished the season with a 75. Point five PFF grade, 18th out of 81 tackles. And again, Bernard Raymond uh, finished with a 73.3, which was 25th out of 81. So I think we're all expecting a pretty big jump from Bernard Raymond. From everything we've heard, he got bigger. Seems like he got better in the offseason. So Bernard Raymond hopefully can be kind of what Anthony Costanzo was. You know, if you remember the first couple of years of Anthony Costanzo's career, it took him a little while to come on, even with having Andrew Luck as a quarterback, like having Anthony Costanzo there, his first few years, it was real tough. He ended up coming around, and by the end of his career, he was one of the best left tackles in the NFL. And we're hoping, and I think a lot of people are kind of expecting Bernard Raymond to be better in his second year than Anthony Costanzo was his, and maybe even by a lot. So, again, that's what we're hoping. There's really no telling. As bad as things were last year, you really just hope, that they're more in the middle of the pack. I think that's my expectation is that they make at least a jump to be, you know, average. And I think having, you know, Anthony Richardson and Gardner Minshew, they've both shown escapability in both their respective careers. Obviously, Anthony Richardson is only in college, so can he do that in the NFL also? But one of the biggest things about Anthony Richardson is the fact that he can escape in the pocket. So even if protection does break down this season, I think it'll look better than it has in years past when we had Phillip Rivers and Carson Wentz and then Matt Ryan. I think just quarterback play alone and escapability is going to help this offensive line. Okay, then you look past that. Look at the new head coach we brought in, Shane Steichen. Shane Steichen got to watch the best O-line in football for multiple seasons, right? And he coached him. He was the offensive coordinator. And with the kind of coach that Shane Steichen is, and as tense as, as everybody says he is, as much of a football nerd as everybody says that he is, it has to be assumed that he's going to come in, he's going to be able to coach everyone up alongside his new offensive line coach, Tony Sperano Jr. Now, if that name sounds familiar, it's because it should. His father, Tony Sperano, was a legendary offensive coach in the NFL. He coached for nearly 30 years in the NFL as either an O-line coach, a tight end coach, an offensive coordinator, or even a head coach, which most offensive line coaches never see the head coach position, Tony Sperano was able to do that. Another offensive line coach that made it to the head coach ranks was Doug Marone, who has 31 years of coaching experience. And the reason that name's important is because Tony Sperano Jr., at some point in his 13-year career, he was behind Doug Marone and coached with Doug Marone in different portions of his career and learning from somebody with that much experience, especially in the offensive line. You know, Doug Marone, before he was a head coach, again, was an offensive line coach for a long time. And learning behind him, getting that experience is really good. Other guys that he was able to get experience from include Bobby Johnson, who had 13 years of experience, George Warhop who ended up with 27 years of experience before he quit coaching. Pat Meyer, who's still in the league and has 13 years of experience. So all the people that Tony Sperano Jr. has been under have experience. 
If you look at what he did last year, he was with the Giants in 2022 under Brian Dable as a head coach, and he served as the assistant offensive line coach for the Giants and was a part of helping the Giants go from one of the worst offensive lines in the league to at least middle of the pack. You know, me personally, I thought the Giants were closer to a top 10, top 12 unit last year, the way they were able to protect for Danny Dimes, the way they were able to finally block well for Saquon Barkley. I thought they did really good. And I think Tony Sperano was able to be a part of that. Now, obviously, the Giants and the coaches that they still have there, coaches that they had, you got to give all those guys credit for what they were able to do. But Tony Sperano was a part of that. And bringing that experience over, I think, is going to be huge for this Colts unit, right? We've seen these guys in the past be a top three unit. We know they can do it. Obviously, some of the pieces are different. Now we have Bernard Raymond instead of Anthony Costanzo. We have Will Fries instead of Mark Lewinsky. I get that. But with this group, Will Fries coming in, what can he be? There's a, a lot of people thinking that he can be average at best. That's all we need him to be. And then we need Bernard Raymond to come on and to be one of the better tackles again. Last year's PFF grade was 25th out of 81 tackles. That's top third of the league. If we can get that to jump up where he's in the top fifth of the league, I think we're in a good spot for a second-year tackle. So I don't know about you, but I have high hopes for the offensive line in 2023. And again, I think you factor everything in, you know, between coaching and the quarterback play. I think it's going to be able to help this unit. And there's already plenty of talent, right? Big Q, Ryan Kelly, Braden Smith, all established guys. We just need Bernard Raymond, Will Fries to step up and for everybody collectively to come together and play as a unit. You know, you have to come back, play together as an offensive line. That's the most important thing. You know, obviously there were some things that surrounded the offensive line, specifically Ryan Kelly last year, that kind of led to some of the circumstances we saw, but Again, I expect a lot. I would like to know what you think of the offensive line going into 2023. What do you expect? Let me know down in the comments and let's talk about it. And take care of yourself. Take care of each other. I'll see you for the next video.